So, I've been getting uh, a lot of good responses to my videos. I'm just starting this, so I'm glad that uh, some people are, this is resonating with some people. Um, I got a short request uh, to, for books. Uh, I have lots of books. <laughs> And I've uh, read a lot through the years on magic. Um, you know, there's, uh, I think one of the most popular things would be to, you know, uh, use a book. Well, nowadays we have our cell phones, so we don't need books, uh, but using, you know, just a, this is, this is what I would use as a base book for survival. If I'm going for survival, this is, you know, uh, Ragnar Ragnar Benson, what a great name. Uh, Ragnar's Urban Survival, Hard Times Guide to Staying Alive in a City. So this comes in handy for me in my area uh, because uh, I live in LA and I have to bounce LA a lot because uh, in Long Beach, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Always, you know, this, this is a standard uh, book that you can get at uh, like Michael's Art Store. It's just, you know, it's a blank book. Um, this one's been from a few years ago, so it's worn out a little bit here. I've got a newer one that I'm going to work with, uh, you know, next. But uh, I'm not sure if we can see this, so that's why I've got a whiteboard that I'm going to break out. But, you know, here's uh, some of the drawings that I've done from 2017. And there we go. I'm going to get into this and uh, do this on the whiteboard. I've also got, you know, this is, so this and this would be good for survival. I mean, I, I always have a book to write in. When I uh, work in security, I had this book, which is uh, Mark Animal McYoung's Cheap Shots, Ambushes, and Other Lessons, a down and dirty street fighting guide. There's another one he did called How to End Violence Quickly or something. So in security, these are really good to have in your car, read, make notes on. Uh, when I was a counselor, which uh, I haven't really got into yet, I think I have to do a video introducing myself. So I went through and got a, as a chemical dependency counselor, I don't want to show this off too much because people might try to copy it or something, but so yes, this is 2008. I got through a program for Chemical Dependency Counseling, um, also for, uh, uh, with the, with the criminal justice thing. So I work for parole and I try to help people stay out of prison and try to stay off drugs and stop committing crimes and bringing negative attention to themselves by the society. That job was uh, really interesting. And when I did have that, this was my book and my notebook. So motivational interviewing skills. This is a very, very crucial uh, book for me. Um, it ties together kind of my uh, training as a counselor and psychology um, and what I would say is magic. So motivation interviewing, this one is good. You can look it up online. I I'm sure there's some YouTube videos about this that are good. I'm gonna try to do more on this. Basically motivational interviewing, the key is anything you tell anybody, they'll resist even on a subconscious level. So. I can tell you something, even if you're at your wit's end and you really want to like, you know, be submissive and bow down and say, I want advice and I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to fight you on your, on your opinions, uh, your uh, authority figure, whatever, you know, people will still resist inside. They'll still not, even if they don't say it, um, even if they don't want to, honestly. So you're always going to resist. So my idea is, um, in magic and in life and everything is when you try to tell teach somebody something or something like that instead of giving advice or trying to be you know trying to just get them at the right time i feel the key is is you have to let that person figure it out for themselves their own way uh and just guide them through figuring out their own solution then they won't resist it because it's their idea it's not yours um this is you know called motivational interviewing uh, i believe it was founded around, uh, uh, I mean, the year 2000, I'm, I'm wanting to say. Um, the, the deal with this, though, is, uh, you know, I encountered these techniques uh, earlier in the uh, our, um, 
U.S. military. Um, these same techniques are what people used to refer to as brainwashing. And uh, they were you know, turned into a technique to hopefully people won't misuse it on uh, people that are having problems with uh, chemical depend dependency issues and all kinds of mental health issues. So it's a base, you know, it's, it's a talking technique. Um, and uh, just like anything else, it could be used uh, to guide people in the wrong direction. Uh, if you make them, if you have them make up their mind that how communism is great. This is something the things that uh, that the Koreans did during the Korean War. Uh, they didn't really even torture the American prisoners that much. They just had them come up with their own dialogue. What if communism is a good idea? What if it's not ethical and it's not good to try to, you know, capitalize and, 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 and monopolize and things like health care and essential needs, food, you know? Um, I can see how people could, you know, form those things, but I mean, you know, that's, that's why I like that. So I'm mixing that, um, of course with the chaos magic, this is the one I recommend. This is kind of like a, almost, uh, like, a, you know, something I've read several times, used to have it as a, almost like, you know, my go-to text for magic. Um, I mean, it's great. I like it. I think it's more about Peter J. Carroll than about what a chaos person would have to do. This is also where chaos kind of gets its its idea about, about you know, the uh, darkness. I mean, he's kind of got a horned figure with tentacles. It's a little scary looking. Um, I don't think chaos magic has to be like that. I, I think that these, this guy, you know, these men, you know, Peter J. Carroll, and uh, I have some other books by uh, the other, other authors then. They were, you know, kind of edgy guys in the 70s, probably into the punk scene in England or something. Um, and uh, they wanted to be edgy. And uh, I think before the book was even written and, you know, he was in a, an order and it's an interesting read and to get the context of this. Um, but there's there's some really good uh, stuff in here, I think. Um, but there's also some uh, stuff that's meant to shock, which I can't be shocked at easily. So... I think there was an intentional want to, to make chaos magic dark and edgy and stuff like that, um, which it doesn't necessarily have to be. I just think that all magic is chaos magic and it's not edgy or dark or bad to tell the truth. And the truth is that there's always chaos. And it's, you know, maybe if I had some control over it, I could stop it and I try to order it and keep as much stuff out of my life as I can that's that's that negative, right? It's not. So this is it. This is the books <laughs> that, I, that I like to use. I'm going to try to do some more on this. Uh, I've got a lot of other ones. Uh, there's this book I'm going to reference that, that has a kind of a crossover. It's a, kind of a witchcraft book. It's by Amber Kay, which is fairly anonymous. It's pretty fairly famous. Uh, I'm going to go into my next video about the powers of the Sphinx, um, which, uh, which this book has some information on. This is what they commonly call the uh, Big Blue Brick, Big Blue, something like that. This is Aleister Crowley's book four, and um, edited by edited by the infamous Herminius Beta, which uh, just blocked a uh, another edition by uh, by Dr. Skinner, which everybody wants to look for. So anyway, this is an all, also a key book that talks about the powers of the Sphinx, the Bible. I've got a Bible still, <laughs> and uh, hey. Goes over the powers of the Sphinx, uh, the four powers. I'll give a little preview. To know, to dare, to be silent. These aren't in order. To will. Those are the four powers. There's a fifth power that I'm not going to give a name on yet. It's a secret and it's a mystery thing. So. so I will see you in the next video. I think this is going well and... I'm glad that I have this set up, this little studio. Uh, 
I'm just having to learn how to edit these better. So I'm trying to get this to stop. <laughs> I think I probably just stop over here.